over 700 self-identified eminent citizens, including the VIA founder editor Siddharth Vardarajan in a statement showed solidarity with the news clip, which is facing allegations of receiving Chinese funding. The joint statement took strong exception on spurious allegations against NewsClick and its founder, Prabir Purkaista. Hello and welcome to the pamphlet. The joint statement said, since its inception, NewsClick has provided critical coverage of government policies and actions and their adverse impact on the lives of millions of our countrymen and women, focusing particularly on the struggles of the most oppressed and exploited sections of our society, its workers and peasants. It has sought to articulate their anguish and distress and to highlight the role of people's movements of all hues fighting for social justice. It has also carried reports that critically analyze international events seen through the often differing perspectives of individual authors. It further said, the joint statement by liberal activists, writers, editors and academicians stated that NewsClick is being hounded for its work. It is an attack on the conscientious role of independent journalism in democracy to inform its readers about the government's failings and to hold the government accountable. The statement further said, Terming the action against NewsClick as attack on the right of people of this country to information that can enable them to fight against injustice, the statement blames corporate-owned media for the erosion of independent journalism. It is all the more unfortunate that a vicious media trial is being staged although investigation into the allegations brought against News Click are in court. The statement further read, As we looked at the undersigned list of the joint statement, we found several recognizable and controversial names. John Dayal is a Christian human rights activist who has been marred in controversies. In 2019 TV debate, Dayal tried to normalize rape culture after he passed a remark on Praful Ketkar that he could rape anyone he wanted and would face no action. In another TV debate, he refused to term Yasin Malika murderer and mentioned that he would only do so after a court declared it. He passed these comments in the presence of Nirmala Khanna, the wife of late squadron leader Ravi Khanna, who was murdered by Yasin Malik in 1990. He was also part of the 32-member group which drafted the controversial communal violence bill, which would have been disastrous for the majority community if passed in the parliament. Siddharth Vardarajan, founder-editor of The Wire, was also a signee in the joint statement on NewsClick. Vardarajan and The Wire are known for spreading fake news, be it the Meta or TechFox story. Last year, The Wire had claimed that Amit Malviya, BJP's IT head, had taken down Instagram post using his ex-check privileges. However, the story was rubbished by both Meta and experts, prompting The Wire to remove it. The Meta story also compelled The Wire to introspect on other stories such as TechFog, an imaginary super app that gave BJP powers to manipulate online trends and hack social media platforms. Red flags were raised concerning the veracity of TechFog stories since one of their experts, identified as Devesh Kumar, worked on the technical parts of Meta Story. Several Meta and TechFox stories were published with a byline for the Siddharth Vardarajan. Siddharth Vardarajan himself has been notorious for spreading misinformation. In 2020, he had attributed a fake quote to UP CM Yogi Adityanath, stating that the latter claimed Sri Ram would protect devotees from coronavirus. Although, the statement was of Ayodhya-based Mahant Paramhans. Former JNU professor and self-acclaimed economist Jayati Ghosh is also a fake news peddler. Recently, she shared a video on Twitter of a person assisting pedestrians to cross the road during rain. She claims that the video is from India. Ghosh tried to demean the New India, a term often used by BJP and PM Narendra Modi to give examples of their developmental works in the country during their tenure. The video shows a man assisting people to cross a flooded road using a makeshift pushcart and he is also seen receiving payment. However, Jayati Ghosh was clueless that the video was neither from India nor did it depict a recent incident. The video actually went viral on Reddit last year when it was shot in Colombia. Even though criticized by several people for sharing misinformation, she does not delete the tweet. Instead, she replied, does it matter 
doesn't it capture so much Indian reality? Colin Gonzalez. The advocate finds his name frequently mentioned in several high-profile cases. He is the founder of the Human Rights Law Network. Colin Gonzalez had also recently represented NGO Manipur Tribal Forum, which sought army protection for the Christian Kuki tribals. It should also be known that Colin Gonzalez HRLN is part of an organization, Socio Legal Information Center. On its now defunct website, it had put up a list of donors. Donors included European Commission, Christian Aid, German Embassy, Sweden Embassy. Further, the HRLN's Gujarat branch was being run by Mirjari Sinha, anti Modi lawyer activist and one of the directors of Foundation that runs propaganda website Alter News. Harsh Mandar has been a close ally of Sonia Gandhi and was a member of National Advisory Council during the erstwhile UPA government. During his tenure as a member of NAC, he was involved in the drafting of disastrous anti-Hindu communal bill. He also took an active part in Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra. In the past, Harsh Mandar has been associated with inciting Muslim mobs against the Indian judicial system after the 2020 Ayodhya verdict. In a video, he was quoted saying that, Supreme Court did not save secularism in Ayodhya. So now time has come to hit the streets. Mandar is also linked with the billionaire and regime changer George Soros, who has been quite a figure to gather attention for his critical comments on Indian democracy and PM Modi. He is also the chairman of George Soros' Open Society Foundation Human Rights Initiative Advisory Board. His NGOs have linked to OSF as a funding receiver. His other NGO, Center for Equity Studies, has been in the news to receive funds from Christian evangelical organizations and has openly talked about religious conversions in the past. CES also receives more than 50% funds from Aziz Premji Foundation. Marxist historians like Romila Thapar and Ifan Habib are responsible for the distortion of our history. The intellectual level of these historians can be gauged from their claim of Yudhishthir being inspired from Ashok. Both of them are known for their venomous speeches. In 2020, Irfan Habib was sent a legal notice after he delivered an inflammatory speech at Aligarh Muslim University against Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah. He termed PM a Jahil and stated that HM should change his name as Shah is a Persian name. The fake news peddler and Supreme Court advocate has been known for standing with anyone to oppose the BJP government. Recently, to score political brownies, he shared a video of Dehradun singer with her father, claiming them to be of Kuki and Methi origin. The famous singer exposed the fake news peddler when she posted a note on Facebook stating that she was singing with her father in the now viral video and that they were not from Manipur. Vikas Mukhya, the girl's father had complained to the Uttarakhand DJP Ashok Kumar he had slammed Prashant Bhushan for his lack of research before tweeting. Besides the above-mentioned individuals, the list of those who stood in solidarity included several prominent others. Individuals such as actor Nasruddin Shah and his wife Ratna Patak Shah also signed the statement. In 2019, Nasruddin Shah collaborated with Amnesty International for a video claiming of threats to constitution and dissent in the nation, which was a move to influence the Indian general elections. JNU professor Nivedita Menon is a hardcore Hindu hater leftist. In 2016, she stirred a controversy after claiming that Kashmir was illegally occupied by India in a lecture. She also stated that Hindu society of being the most violent in that same lecture. N. Ram, the former editor-in-chief of The Hindu, is also among those standing in support of the news click. Ahead of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, when opposition desperately tried to prove the Rafale deal as a scam, the Hindu had published a doctor doc. The Hindu sought to imply that the Defence Ministry was opposed to the Rafale purchase and the Prime Minister was the sole one to promoting it. A crucial passage from the same document, a note from former Defence Minister Manohar Parikar was cut out by the newspaper and as a result it felt as if the Defence Ministry was opposing the Rafale deal. According to the uh, note from the former defense minister, the officer was overreacting and uh, the offices of the French president and Indian prime minister were only keeping an eye on the deal's development. NewsClick has been in the middle of controversy after an NYT report mentioned its connection with a US businessman Neville Roy Singham, 
who lobbied for Chinese influence. Newsclick received 38 crore, which were traced back to an individual based in China. It has been stated that Neville Roy Singham is the true recipient of the money obtained from US, according to a statement made by Newsclick shareholder Amit Chakraborty. Interestingly, through Newsclick, funds were transferred to several individuals linked with Tista Sitalwar. The media organization was recently suspended from Twitter. The joint statement attempts to show support to Newsclick from the civil society space. Although some of the individuals which have signed the statement themselves have dubious reputation and are known to be biased to a particular ideology. Thank you. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to our channel and do not forget to follow us on social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.